All right, uh, I think we're all ready to begin. Um, so hello everyone. My name is Amanda Fiore and I am the chair of the McGill Pharmaceutical Career Student Network or McGill PCSN for short. Uh, we are very happy to welcome you to this webinar today about the increasing role of pharmacovigilance during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond, presented by Dr. Omar Aymer, a uh, PharmD and PhD. Dr. Aymer is an expert in the field of pharmacovigilance, and he has also recently launched InnoVigilance International Academy, which you will hear more about too. I will now turn your attention over to our guest speaker, Dr. Aymer, who will tell you more about himself and share his expertise on today's topic. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. to uh, Thanks to the PCSN. Uh, for this invitation and I'm really happy to share um, and share information regarding the uh, on the pharmacovigilance field and also the important uh, increasing and the importance of the role of pharmacovigilance during uh, the whole drug development different drugs but also uh, nowadays with the um, uh, within the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, I will start with with um, uh, a short bio, uh, personal bio uh, biography, then uh, an overview of the pharmacovigilance. What is the pharmacovigilance? Uh, the purpose and the objectives of pharmacovigilance. Then we will jump on the uh, developments of uh, of vaccines and the role of uh, the drug safety and pharmacovigilance in clinical trials, then in post-marketing, current uh, post-marketing of vaccines and surveillance of adverse drug reactions or adverse events. Uh, then we will see also the uh, in, uh, in importance of the uh, pharmacovigilance professionals uh, in this journey uh, and their, uh, their, um, their input and uh, their duties. So in my uh, studies, I was graduated in uh, 20 as a pharmacist in uh, Algeria, University of Oran in North Africa. Uh, then I got my PhD at the University of Algiers in 2004 on, pharmaco uh, on pharmacology. Then I moved to Paris in 2008 uh, and earned um, uh, Master Science in Industrial uh, Pharmacy at the University Paris Descartes uh, in Paris, France. Uh, then a Pharmacovigilance and Drug Safety Master Science at the same university in 2015. For the career, I was a, a lecturer uh, for four years at the university, my uh, own university uh, in RN in Algeria, North Africa. Uh, and uh, as a director of uh, control, quality control of pharmaceutical products laboratory, uh, laboratory uh, uh, as a health authority uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Algeria. Then when I moved in 2008, I was a pharmacovigilance uh, pharmacist at the European hospital, Georges Pompidou in Paris, uh, uh, in, with, in, during the, uh, the H1N1 uh, vaccination campaign, uh, I discovered the pharmacovigilance and drug safety uh, monitoring of adverse events of vaccines. Uh, then also spent uh, more than uh, uh, six years at another hospital uh, at Assistance Publique des Hôpitaux de Paris, which is the uh, greater uh, Paris hospital universities uh, in Paris in France. Then in 2017, I moved in, uh, I moved to Montreal, Canada, uh, and I'm uh, working uh, uh, as a pharmacovigilance and drug and device safety specialist uh, here in Laval, Quebec. Um, also, um, I'm a speaker and chair of front tables um, for different uh, international uh, events, especially the World Congress, Americas and Europe. Uh, I'm author of articles uh, on the uh, impact of the artificial intelligence uh, on pharmacovigilance. I'm also a member of the um, International Society of Pharmacovigilance and the North American chapter uh, of pharmacovigilance. And I earned the certification 
on improving global health safety and quality uh, at Harvard, Harvard University, Harvard in uh, 2020. Then uh, I uh, launched, as you said, uh, mentioned uh, Amanda at the beginning, the InnoVigilance International Academy for uh, training in pharmacovigilance. So let's jump now in the uh, on the, um, uh, the, uh, the the definition. What is pharmacovigilance? As per the definition of the World Health Organization, the uh, pharmacovigilance or drug safety is the science and activities relating to the detection, the assessment, understanding, and the prevention of adverse eff effects adverse effects, adverse events, adverse drug reactions. So the, uh, we got a rich uh, terminology and uh, or any other drug related problem. Uh, the pharmacovigilance covers the entire life cycle uh, from the clinical uh, settings and clinical uh, phase, phases and the post-marketing uh, post marketing after the approval of, of the product of a medicinal product, the medicinal product or pharmaceutical products can be a drug, a vaccine, a medical device and uh, cosmetics. The pharmacovigilance also is the, an activity contributing to the protection of patients uh, and public health. And we, uh, we talk about the patient safety. The pharmacovigilance in the pharmace pharmaceutical companies is a point of convergence between the medical research, the regulatory of affairs, as uh, it's a field, uh, highly regulated fields by the regulatory bodies, the regulatory uh, authorities, as in Canada, the Health Canada, uh, the FDA uh, in the US, uh, the European Medicine Agency in Europe, the PMDA in Japan, and also the, uh, the ICH, which is the International Council or uh, Council of Harmonization, um, which, um, uh, which is the, um, uh, a group of, of a committee of the three main uh, regulatory uh, authorities. First, uh, uh, the European Medicine Agency, uh, the FDA, and uh, the PMDA, the Japanese Regulation uh, Authority. Then Canada joined on 2019, August 2019, Health Canada, and other regulatory authorities around the world. Uh, its role, the role of pharmacovigilance is increasingly important in an environment ever more sensitive to the concept of risk benefit ratio or risk benefit balance uh, and the transparency of communications. To, to be involved and to uh, involved in pharmacovigilance, uh, we, uh, we, we must have a good knowledge of pharmacovigilance practices as in the clinical uh, research we have the GCP or the good clinical uh, practices in pharmacovigilance we have also the good uh, pharmacovigilance practices uh, the European guidance the Canadian guidance the uh, US guidance uh, or, and guidelines, the regulations, um, expertise in therapeutic products and the good knowledge of the uh, therapeutic areas and the medical coding of adverse events. The safety data administration uh, through uh, reading and analysis of the product literature uh, of adverse events uh, reported in the medical uh, literature, the attending, attending conferences and ex external programs and taking part, part in in-house trainings, sessions and meetings. So in this figure, we, we will see um, the, uh, how the, uh, the, the pharmacovigilance cover the uh, entire as I mentioned before, the life cycle of, um, uh, of the pharmaceutical product or in our topic today, the vaccine. So um, for this example, uh, Health Canada uh, uh, 
has uh, the, so uh, the, the, the pharmaceutical uh, company uh, launched the clinical preclinical studies, drug discovery, then preclinical pre uh, studies, then the clinical trials and the clinical trial review but by the health authority, which is in this example, Health Canada, uh, then uh, the submission of the review of all the results within the clinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three. Uh, then the, uh, the manufacturer got the approval or the license uh, the term is different from uh, a country to another, from a region to another. Uh, the marketing authorization uh, approval in 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 Europe, uh, and then start also the early post market period uh, with uh, um, an early pharmacovigilance monitoring, early uh, pharmacovigilance surveillance, then to increase the knowledge of the. Uh, adverse events that can occur um, on post-marketing after uh, the approval uh, and the, um, the monitoring of the adverse events continue. Uh, there will be also a, a re-evaluation re of the license by the health authorities until uh, uh, the, uh, the, the end of the life cycle of the product uh, or eventually uh, uh, the removal of the product if we uh, uh, we find higher risks uh, with uh, the use of this product. As you know, uh, nowadays we are in the uh, COVID-19 global pandemic. So uh, uh, just a reminder that uh, the COVID-19 uh, definition uh, as per the World Health Organization is coronavirus disease. Uh, which is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered uh, coronavirus. Um, uh, this, uh, the most uh, people infected with the COVID-19 virus will experience mild to moderate respiratory uh, illness and recover without requiring a special treatment. However, uh, older people and those with underlying medical problems uh, like uh, cardiovascular disease, the diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, and cancer are uh, more like, likely to develop serious illness. As, as of today, so this is uh, the uh, impact of this uh, pandemic and the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, disease, uh, all more than uh, 2 million uh, and 400 deaths around the world. Uh, the US, unfortunately, today reached more than half of million death, uh, which is the higher uh, uh, rate of death in, 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 in the world. Uh, then uh, also um, um, confirmed cases of for more than uh, 110 million cases. Then, as you know, uh, after the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the global uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, was uh, uh, declared by the uh, World Health Organization in last year, in March 2020, uh, the, uh, the governments, the uh, health authorities, the uh, um, uh, health systems in different, in different countries and uh, uh, the World Health Organization started to, uh, to develop, to think, and scientists, community, community started to think about a solution about therapeutic solution and against against this this uh, this coronavirus this covid this disease by uh, by um, uh, using new uh, drugs as remdesivir uh, or repurposed drugs as hydroxychloroquine uh, uh, liponavir um, uh, convalescent plasma stem cell therapy with with uh, new clinical trials uh, launched uh, in in emergency by the health authorities in hospitals uh, to uh, to to find uh, the, uh, the 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 
the miraculous drug uh, to fight uh, against this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this disease. Then uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the governments and the World Health Organization and the governments and the uh, health authorities, especially uh, the uh, European, uh, Canadian, the uh, US, Chinese and Rus Russian also, uh, the UK, uh, they um, tr tried and they, they launched the, uh, the campaign of drug research and dr vaccine search and vaccine development against the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, co the COVID-19. So they developed a different, uh, different uh, uh, candidate vaccines, more than 200 uh, candidates with uh, DNA uh, vaccine technology, the uh, RNA and or mRNA uh, uh, vaccine uh, technology. So, uh, and other, the, um, the um, peptide, the coronavirus, uh, the, um, um, sorry, the, um, um, the COVID-19 the COVID um, uh, protein, uh, protein vector uh, or protein vector uh, technology with different uh, technologies uh, and different vaccines, uh, weakened vaccine uh, with weakened uh, viruses with the inactivated viruses. So uh, the health authorities also um, make uh, an, uh, a fast track uh, approval and fast track um, uh, trials to allow the pharmaceutical companies to develop vaccines in an, uh, in, in an urgent basis. Uh, as we know, uh, the um, with the uh, the um, the his history of the vaccine development, that the vaccines were developed and are developed were developed before, uh, within 10, uh, 8 to twelve years, and uh, just the emergency uh, the last year in twenty twenty, uh, as 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 we know, all the uh, vaccines were developed in 10, uh, some, some of, of the vaccines already marketed were developed in 10 to uh, 12 months. So um, the vaccine development begins as here in Canada uh, with uh, uh, the preclinical uh, settings, uh, settings, preclinical testings and uh, trials. Then the phase one to know uh, and to, uh, to um, uh, to, this, to, um, to demonstrate if the vaccine is safe. And when we are uh, talking about safety and, uh, and uh, surveillance, we are talking about pharmacovigilance. So uh, the pharmacovigilance is involved in the vaccine, in the phase one, phase two, and phase three. So the phase one uh, uh, to, uh, to demonstrate if the vaccine is safe and what is the safe dose are there any side effects on uh, uh, about tens of volunteers, healthy volunteers in phase one, then if the results are good, we um, uh, the, begin the uh, phase two uh, to, to know how well do, uh, does the vaccine work. And we talk about the uh, efficacy of the vaccine. Uh, is it safe on a larger number of people? Uh, and in phase two, uh, the, um, the, the vaccine candidates uh, or the investi investigational uh, vaccine or drug is uh, being tested on tens of volunteers, patients. Is, is, uh, so uh, also the safest and most effective those so also there's a safety monitoring a pharmacovigilance and drug safety monitoring of uh, of this this vaccines candidate or investigational vaccines if the uh, the also the 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 results are are, are good uh, we uh, begin the uh, the phase three uh, in clinical uh, clinical uh, phase uh, three uh, on thousands of volunteers to, uh, to, um, to demonstrate and to, to see if uh, the vaccine prevent the disease. And we talk about efficacy of the vaccine. 
and what are what are the uh, side effects of the vaccines and here we are talking also about the um the um if the, the safety profile uh, we will see uh, later that uh, for the approval of products we always need the safety profile the safety information uh, coming from the three phases and also the preclinical pre pre trials and uh, the efficacy to see and to assess the uh, risk benefit risk balance to uh, to see if the benefits outweigh uh, the risks to uh, to um, give the approval for the investigational products. So the man manufacturer submits the application to Health Canada here in Canada, or to the health authorities uh, in um, in in different region uh, in the U.S. Uh, for FDA in the uh, Euro uh, in Europe for the uh, European Medicine Agency and the other region. Uh, so um, to get the approval. Then uh, the vaccine vaccination campaign, as we are, what we are living now, um, begins the approval and the distribution, the vaccination, but we continue to monitor and review to confirm the safety of the vaccine and that benefits outweigh, uh, outweigh the risks and the uh, um, the um, the monitoring of the of the safety uh, profile of the the product of the vaccines in this example uh, to uh, to see uh, and to assess and to prevent risks uh, already now. So this is the the uh, the state of of uh, nowadays of the uh, vaccines uh, development and approval in Canada. The same thing in the US, uh, and this is a figure from uh, the CDC website, uh, the, uh, the, the clinical phases, as we saw in the, the figure one for, from Health Canada. So we have the basic research, the discovery, the preclinical pre studies, and uh, evaluating the safety, which is a pri prior, uh, priority during the vaccine development and the approval. Then uh, the uh, phase one, phase two, phase three, uh, phase one, mainly the safety, phase two, mainly the effectiveness, but the phase three, the safety and the effectiveness uh, trials uh, for, uh, for the vaccines. Then the FDA review and uh, the different committee uh, review. Then uh, the approval, the post-approval monitoring and research uh, what, we, we, what we call also the uh, post-authorization safety studies or phase four. So the phase one, phase two, phase three are clinical uh, in the, within the clinical uh, uh, phase or the clinical phases. Then the phase four is post-marketing uh, trials. Same thing also in Europe with the vaccine development. Uh, so the European Medicine Agency, agency uh, uh, launched a fast track approval uh, for the product for the vaccines uh, developed within the, uh, the European region and the, uh, the, um, the clinical trials in, uh, in the country, European countries. So uh, as we say, is, as we saw before, and as we said, uh, it's really the the the, uh, the um, same um, the same phases: uh, the pharmaceutical quality and small small scale studies, the non clinical or preclinical trials. Just the terms differs from from uh, from the Europe and North America it's a little different uh, but they are the same uh, the same uh, significance and same same thing uh, the clinical trials phase one phase two phase three uh, to assess the uh, safety and the uh, effectiveness uh, then the uh, review by the European Medicine Agency and the different uh, uh, evaluating committee in, the, in the, the European Medicine Agency, then the manufacturing, then the approval and the safety studies or safety monitoring uh, post-approval. 
So uh, now, as we uh, all know uh, that the COVID-19 vaccines uh, now um, approved are uh, uh, the uh, mRNA uh, vaccine by Moderna, the first, uh, and Pfizer uh, BioNTech, uh, the first ones. Then uh, the uh, Oxford University AstraZeneca, but also the Sputnik uh, V, the, um, the Russian um, vaccine, the Sinovac vaccine, in an inactivated vaccine uh, marketed and used in, in, um, in the vaccination campaign in China. Uh, then the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, which is already approved in, in uh, some countries today, and uh, under uh, review for approval in Canada and other countries in, in Europe uh, the, for the European Medicine Agency and the, um, the FDA in the US. So uh, as we said also before for drug or for these vaccines, uh, even once the safety and the efficacy and the quality uh, of a potential product is assessed, with all products, uh, there are residual risks uh, and adverse events of interest to monitor in uh, post-approval. So, uh, uh, the uh, to to approve to give the approval of the author uh, marketing authoriz authorization for a vaccine for a product, a pharmaceutical product in general, uh, the safety is the first. Uh, and as, as I said before, the safety is all the, uh, the um, safety profile, all the safety information coming from the, uh, the clinical trials where, uh, by the drug safety professionals um, get rid and assessed and uh, analyzed. Uh, then the uh, efficacy of, of, the, of the product, which is important and communicated along with, uh, with the, the, the vaccines, we heard about 95%, 92% and uh, uh, a percentage of, of efficacy for the vaccines. Then also the quality of, uh, of the, uh, uh, the, the product. So uh, what we know about the safety profile at the end of the clinical trial program is what could, but the question is what could happen when the drug is used in a normal practice. So as, as, we, as we know all that all medicines, including vaccines, had uh, benefits and risks um, at the time of the approval, evidence comes mainly from controlled, randomized clinical trials in, uh, in, in clinical settings, in hospitals, highly uh, uh, regulated and monitored um, environment. Then the, after the approval, the medicines will be used in real conditions by far a larger a larger population uh, and for the vaccines uh, it will be uh, and it's now uh, used um, on billions of uh, of people so the safety is monitored to identify any new risks or changing changing risk as quickly as possible and take action to prevent those risks So after the approval, uh, a detection of previously unrecognized, unexpected, or changing side effects uh, of the vaccines to optimize the safe and effective use, uh, intensive analysis of the reports of suspected side effects from patients and healthcare professionals, so the reporting of the adverse events, after uh, the immunization or after vaccination. The manufacturers are obliged to conduct the safety studies or the post, as I said, the post approval safety studies. Uh, so the studies continues after the approval. Uh, additional studies also will be performed in Europe or other, uh, other region on the safety of vaccines when used in the real life.
than uh, the monitoring of the international uh, collaboration on COVID-19 vaccine uh, by the health, uh, health, uh, World Health Organization and uh, an, an intensive communication between the different regulatory authorities. As for the World Health Organization, the Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety uh, was established in 1999 uh, to provide independent author authoritative uh, scientific advice, uh, advice to the World Health Organization on vaccine safety issues of global or regional concern. And the concern of the, the vaccines that are largely uh, used uh, around the world globally. So in the view of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this committee uh, was uh, a meeting of this committee was an extraordinary meeting that took place in, uh, in last May, uh, aimed to provide guidance to the countries in preparation for the introduction of COVID-19 vaccines. So uh, the preparedness of the uh, safety monitoring, uh, post-marketing safety mo mo monitoring uh, uh, of uh, the, uh, the vaccines started since last May 2020 uh, to prepare this monitoring and this uh, um, post-approval uh, surveillance. So the COVID-19 vaccine safety surveillance infrastructure and the capacity should be ideally be in a place prior to vaccine introduction in all countries. A working group of experts should be established to provide in each country to provide uh, 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 prerequisites for vaccine introduction, the creation of basic adverse events of special interests. Uh, the World Health Organization should work with national teams and expanded program on immunization in order to strengthen the routine vaccine safety monitoring. Uh, the other also national regulators uh, must uh, make the same and developers uh, and the manufacturers should share available regional and international safety data, including safety summaries uh, with the reviewing regulatory authority. Uh, for, this is to, uh, to show you uh, the importance, uh, the, the increasing importance and the increasing role of the pharmacovigilance. As uh, I know, and we are seeing, we are seeing nowadays, there's a lot of openings in for pharmacovigilance uh, positions to uh, to to make this uh, this this surveillance and this monitoring um, uh, possible. Uh, so uh, this safety surveillance with of health of Health Canada uh, to secure the sufficient supply of vaccines, the regulatory authorization for safety and efficacy, what we already saw, to decide on vaccine use and sequencing based on expert uh, advice. Uh, then at the end, uh, which is important, the monitor to monitor the vaccine safety, effectiveness, and coverage. The, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and nowadays, Health Canada is increasing its monitoring and assessment activities of emerging uh, safety issues uh, of, uh, following the use of these vaccines, uh, also increasing the, uh, the collaboration and information sharing with partners in Canada and around the world, such as the World Health Organization and the other uh, regulatory authorities in the other uh, countries and region. The pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies also um, are required uh, to continuously monitor the use of their health products and report any side effects to, uh, to Health Canada. They may be also asked to perform other risk monitoring activities or post-market studies beyond the existing routine collection and assessment uh, requirements. And also, uh, the, these pharmaceutical companies are in, encouraged to fast track reporting of possible side effects associated with the COVID-19 vaccines. 
in the US side, uh, the, uh, the system or the vaccine adverse event reporting systems uh, which is a virus, uh, it was established in the uh, 90s of the last century uh, to, um, uh, to, to um, uh, for warning, which is a national warning, uh, early warning system to detect possible safety problems in the US uh, uh, licensed vaccines. The virus is co-managed by the uh, CDC, which is the centers for uh, disease control and prevention established in Atlanta uh, in the US uh, and the uh, Food and Drug Administration. The virus accepts and analyzes reports of adverse events after a person has received the vaccination. The healthcare professionals are required to report certain uh, adverse events and vaccination manufacturers uh, are required to report all adverse events that come to their attention. In the US also, they have the vSafe, which is a smart smartphone based or application tool uh, that uses text messaging and web sur surveys to provide personalized health check-ins after uh, the um, uh, after you receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, through the uh, VSAFE, uh, we can, uh, the, the patient or the, uh, the person can quickly tell the CDC if uh, they have any side effect after getting the COVID-19 vaccine. In the Europe uh, region, so the reporting suspected says, uh, side effects uh, following vac vaccination is also critical. Anyone can report a suspected side effect to their national authority in different countries or uh, directly to the European Medicine Agency. Uh, all reports are sent to the uh, safety database, the European safety database, which is UDRA vigilance uh, of suspected side effects where the data are analyzed to detect new side effects for all the product, but in our example here for the vaccines also, and anonymize this data, anonymize the data uh, which are made public for all uh, to review. As I said, all this increasing role, the, this increasing role of pharmacovigilance uh, and the, uh, this, uh, uh, the evolving of the regulation, um, uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, we are, we are uh, uh, witnessing now the, uh, the, this increasing role is following by a lot of openings and a lot of interest in pharmacovigilance and of uh, pharmacovigilance professionals pharmacovigilance and drug safety qualified uh, persons in different regions as the vaccines and the drugs are used globally and around the world. Uh, so um, I want just and quickly to uh, uh, share with you uh, the career path uh, options and some duties of pharmacovigilance uh, professionals. Uh, so uh, uh, the pharmacovigilance specialist uh, may be an HCP, uh, uh, HCP, uh, a healthcare professional, uh, medical doctor, pharmacist, or nurse, uh, and but also uh, all, uh, all um, uh, graduates uh, with a master science, uh, um, graduate students with master science and PhD from life sciences in biochemistry, in pharmacology, in other uh, life sciences. So uh, the pharmacovigilance specialist maybe uh, can involve, uh, can be uh, the, the, uh, the position can be evolved uh, in a senior specialist, then project leader, then manager and director, then also consultant and training, trainer or educator. Uh, the, uh, the, the knowledge of the reporting serious adverse events of the guidance of the GVPs, which are the good pharmacovigilance practices or good vigilance practices. Uh, also, uh, the, um, uh, 
the reporting and submission of uh, adverse events, the medical writing of periodic, adver uh, periodic reports, annual safety reports, uh, uh, periodic safety update reports, and also conducting the audits and uh, inspections uh, in the companies. The main duties for pharmacovigilance uh, pro, uh, professional is to manage the adverse events, the individual case safety reports, to uh, be involved in clinical trials activities, as we saw that the pharmacovigilance is important uh, during the clinical uh, phases, to contribute to the compliance of pharmacovigilance activities, to be compliant with uh, um, regarding the uh, the regulation, the health, the um, health authorities, and also the internal policies for their uh, companies, and also uh, serves in an ad advisory capacity to revise product monographs and uh, risk management measures or implement uh, some uh, actions also in pharmacovigilance. Uh, so, the, as as uh, as I mentioned before, so uh, uh, pharmacovigilance specialists have a university degree in health sciences, uh, and uh, sometimes we can uh, ask for the senior level uh, two to five years of relevant experience in pharmacovigilance, clinical research, or regulatory affairs. But, but there's also entry levels for drug safety associate. Uh, for the fresh uh, graduate students. Uh, this is the main uh, sk skill set uh, the uh, pharmacovigilance professional uh, may uh, must or uh, should have excellent communication skills, fluency uh, in English, also for the, uh, the companies, uh, global companies. Uh, and maybe ha as here in, in, in Quebec, uh, uh, Canada, uh, the, um, uh, to be bilingual, uh, French and English, the ability to keep tight de de deadlines because we have uh, regulation and deadlines for submitting uh, adverse events to health authorities, the ability to work as a part of the team uh, and team, team player, ability to work on multiple projects sim uh, simultaneously, and uh, analytical and strategic uh, and uh, thinkings and synthetic synthet uh, synthetic uh, skills. So the pharmacovigilance specialist role uh, reports to the director or manager in the team. Um, the as um, as I said and mentioned uh, a few minutes before, uh, according to the, a new report by Grandview Research. Uh, on just last month, January 2021, the market size uh, of pharmacovigilance uh, was valued as 6.33 billion US dollars in 2020 and is expected to expand and to grow uh, at a compound annual growth rate uh, to reach um, 14, almost 15 uh, billion uh, 15 uh, billion dollars uh, in 2028 uh, to show you that the pharmacovigilance has uh, a good uh, uh, days shining days for the uh, next years a few years for the conclusion so the vaccines as we know are a key pillar of a public health and have been proven to prevent serious disease before the COVID-19. The majority are, of the uh, adverse events are uh, mild and um, uh, even rare serious side effects must be detected and analyzed and prevented. The COVID-19 vaccine's safety will be stronger with the participation of healthcare providers, manufacturers, and regulators, as we saw uh, in the slides uh, uh, above or um, uh, earlier. So no medicine is 100% safe. So like any other medicines, vaccines can have side effects and the pharmacovigilance must be strengthened in, uh, in the following months and years 
to uh, and the safety uh, cause the safety will not be compromised of our patients. Uh, the uh, really the the the, the uh, last uh, last thing, last but not least, um, I I want just to share with you uh, the uh, drug safety and pharmacovigilance certificate I launched with. Uh, an amazing team, RX Course, based in Toronto. Uh, they developed within their platform uh, the course. Uh, so um, uh, the course uh, you can uh, see all the uh, and uh, check all the information regarding this course with three packages. Uh, uh, all the information regarding the um, the learnings uh, on pharmacovigilance and drug safety regarding the regulation the, uh, the uh, pharmacovigilance operations and the medical writing of reports, the uh, risk management plans, the aggregate reports, uh, the uh, periodic safety update reports, uh, and also it's um, a job ready certification, uh, which is um, which is uh, recommended by the, uh, the, um, uh, the American Society of Pharmacovigilance. Uh, the, in, in, the, uh, in this certification, all the, uh, the 25 lectures are pre-recorded. So the student or the trainee uh, can, uh, uh, can uh, follow this learning or e-learning at uh, his or uh, her uh, own pace. And uh, you can, uh, you can um, uh, also, you have uh, more than uh, 30 uh, hours learning with handouts, with uh, uh, Zoom uh, questions, uh, live Zoom questions with the instructor. So uh, the, the surprise is uh, to get 10% uh, discount uh, using the code uh, McGill before uh, the uh, uh, 28th uh, March, uh, March next uh, next month. Uh, so you can uh, uh, ask and you can follow uh, the um, page uh, LinkedIn page of InnoVigilance International Academy. You can also and I uh, advise you to uh, to uh, follow uh, my posts and all the information I share. Uh, on the um, on LinkedIn, but also you can contact us uh, by uh, visiting the InnoVigilance uh, that dot com uh, website. Thank you for your attention. Thanks so much for that uh, excellent talk. Um, we would like to uh, open the discussion for some questions, if anyone has any. I have a question. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay, okay. Alex. Yeah. Um, yes, I have a question about how uh, monitoring of adverse events is actually done. Does it take, um, I don't know, some kind of programming because of the large data sets, things like that? Yeah, of course. So um, uh, the um, as, as we saw, uh, as the development of the vaccines uh, begins uh, um, many months before, uh, earlier in, in May, in April, so uh, the health authorities, you know, the, the pharmacovigilance is already uh, and is already exists since the, uh, uh, the, the last century, the 60s, after uh, you maybe know or heard about the thalidomide tragedy. So uh, the countries and health authorities uh, has also uh, the experience and the um, the tools to monitor the uh, the uh, the adverse uh, this adverse event, monitor the uh, vaccines and the other vaccines as the flu vaccines, for example, being uh, administered and used every year. Uh, so yes, the data uh, is increasing, and also. Uh, as I said before, uh, I'm involving, involved in the uh, uh, using the ad, um, uh, artificial intelligence 
to uh, to uh, analyze the high amounts and increasing increasing amount of data, um, the safety safety data uh, that we receive from uh, the reporters from hospitals, which is required here in Canada uh, since the Vanessa law. Uh, was uh, implemented, uh, uh, was effective since uh, December uh, 19, uh, uh, 2019. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the health authorities as Health Canada here or the FDA or the European Medicine Agency and uh, the health authorities around the world and the Ministry of Health around the world, uh, are uh, they prepared uh, this uh, monitoring and safety surveillance uh, in post-marketing uh, period. Uh, okay, so as a follow-up question, if we're interested in this kind of field, would you recommend a programming background or not necessarily? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Um, if, if we're interested in this kind of career, looking at uh, the like monitoring some of the data coming from uh, hospitals or, or other um, bodies. Yes. Would you recommend a programming background or some experience with some softwares? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the, uh, in the drug safety, uh, in, in, in companies, in drug safety and pharmacovigilance departments, uh, the companies are using safety databases. And uh, the, uh, there's two or three safety databases known. Uh, I, I won't make a uh, uh, I won't mention the name of this databases, but the safety databases, there are two, two or three uh, safety databases known uh, around the world uh, for pharmacovigilance. Uh, and in our, um, our uh, training as certificates, we are providing um, uh, training on this safety database, but also for pharmacovigilance uh, professionals, uh, the use of uh, the, um, uh, the knowledge of minimum knowledge of this safety database is uh, an asset uh, or maybe sometimes is uh, required uh, for, for some companies. Uh, but um, let's say uh, the knowledge of uh, using application, the MS Office, Excel uh, is, is uh, now for all the, uh, the careers now is uh, something which uh, is expected from candidates and required. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. I had a question. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. It was very interesting and I really enjoyed that you were showing us the differences between the US and Canada and Europe and all those nuances. So thank you very much for the ridiculous presentation. Um, right, my question was, so if we were to do this program uh, that you've presented, we would be able to get jobs in Canada and the US or does it also cover requirements in Europe as well or elsewhere? Thank you. It's a, it's a great question. So, uh, uh, you know, as I begin with my career and I, uh, I already uh, has a career in North Africa, in Europe mm -hmm. and here in North America. And I'm involved, as you, you saw, um, in, in the North American chapter of the International Society of Pharmacovigilance. Um, uh, the, uh, for the, this, uh, our training, our certification, uh, cover all the regulation, worldwide regula regulation, the, the, uh, the module one, which is uh, the module for uh, the regulation. And it's required for a candidate or pharmacovigilance mm -hmm. professional to have, uh, to have a strong knowledge of the regulation. Mm -hmm. And we all um, uh, look for, um, be, uh, for, for a career in global companies. Okay, so the global companies, in the global companies, we have to, uh, we must ha have, uh, have a knowledge of the global, uh, the global uh, regulation. Uh, as um, if we are here in Canada, uh, of course, we are following the, uh, the um, uh, Canadian regulation. But if you are involved, if you're working in a European company, uh, a French company or a UK company, UK now it's with the Brexit, it's now a little different uh, regulation, but it's mainly the same. 
uh, but uh, if you are involved in, let's say, uh, a Swiss company, so uh, you have to follow the Canadian company because we are you are the aff Canadian affiliate of the company, but also you have to follow the Swiss or the European uh, regulation because the headquarters, the global uh, PV departments in the Europe must also um, submit and follow the regulation, uh, for the European regulation. There's also Japanese, uh, Japanese uh, companies here in Canada or in the US. So let's say a Japanese company in the US, if you are involved in uh, such company, you have to follow the FDA regulation and also uh, the Japanese regulation to uh, follow the internal policy of your company. Um, uh, and to be polyvalent, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to work uh, in different companies, let's say that a good knowledge of the, uh, it's not as complicated as we can, uh, but yeah, it's knowledge as other regulation. Uh, uh, in our certification, we, uh, we have uh, lectures in, uh, for the um, ICH regulation, which is the International Committee uh, uh, Council of Harmonization, uh, regrouping all the um, health authorities, main health authorities, as I said, uh, FDA, PMDA, Japan, Japan, European Medicine Agency, and Health Canada. Uh, we cover the ICH, uh, the Canadian uh, uh, regulation, the European regulation, the FDA regulation, the MENA, Middle East and North Africa regulation, and also the Latin America regulation. Mm -hmm. So you can, with the knowledge of this regulation, you can, you can uh, be involved and work around the world. I hope so. Very comprehensive. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Do we have questions on the, sh on the chat? I don't see many people thanking you for the presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have another question. Yeah, <laughs> please go ahead. So, okay, so then um, once one has this training and this more comprehensive knowledge, if, if you're just, um, if you're a graduate student, you have a MSc or a PhD in the life sciences, I guess like myself, so no medical background, what would the first position in pharmacovigilance be for you at a company? Like what's what's the, the title that you could take on? Yeah, I I, as, as a PhD or master science, uh, you can, uh, you can um, uh, apply for a drug safety associate. Oh, okay. Or also uh, entry level drug safety uh, drug safety um, specialist. Um, uh, the um, you know uh, I I built this certification this course uh, as I said it's job ready. Okay, so it's not it's it's just it's not just a theory a theoretical lectures, but uh, a job ready. And I built this this. Um, uh, this uh, certification, this course on a job description uh, of 80% job descriptions that are the same, uh, the, the uh, qualification. So in uh, such positions or openings, they are all, uh, all the, uh, the companies are requ requiring uh, the uh, uh, health, uh, the uh, knowledge of regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, a knowledge of uh, databases, uh, safety mm -hmm. databases, a knowledge of the uh, drug up, uh, drug development, uh, because it's important uh, um, for the biotech uh, for drug development and the uh, the approval process in different uh, region and for health authorities, uh, the, um, the case management, the causality assessment, uh, the uh, knowledge, the uh, med drug coding which is uh, the um, uh, medical dictionary uh, for regulatory affairs mm -hmm. uh, uh, terms. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's, uh, um, uh, we, we have a lecture on, on MEDRA coding. So the knowledge of the MEDRA coding, it's important for, uh, for the uh, uh, pharmacovigilance or qualified pharmacovigilance professional. Um, then the writing, 
of the, uh, the signal detection, the writing of uh, the different reports, uh, PSURs or uh, the safety reports and the risk management system and audit and inspections. And also we have uh, a lecture on the um, uh, job search process for drug safety positions. And uh, also uh, we assist to, uh, uh, to um, update uh, your resume uh, for uh, such positions and the cover letters uh, for such positions. Uh, we had uh, just to share that we already had a, a success story uh, some of our trainees, uh, I have a uh, student already uh, joined uh, a biotech and CROs in, in, um, in Boston area. Uh, another one, a medical doctor joined here, uh, a company here in, in, in Montreal. Uh, so uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, we are efficient. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. To them. Yeah. You're welcome. Any other question? Can I? <laughs> yeah, sorry. go ahead. We don't, we don't have any questions in the chat yet, but anyone, if you want to speak up as well and unmute yourself, feel free to. Um, so then if you're starting at drug safety, uh, like you said, the position, um, I'm just trying to get a sense of what it's like to, to be in that position and what you do day to day. So I guess it's a lot of reading and a lot of like analyzing um, papers, like uh, medical papers that are reporting on how patients have responded in different trials and then kind of pooling that information and help like putting it towards that risk assessment. So like, are you a part of bringing that information together, getting it from the databases, but also other sources and then handing that off to your superior and saying, this is what I found? So we, we, we have, all, we have um, uh, at the beginning, the collection of the data collection, the safety mm -hmm. data collection uh, that can come from uh, clinical settings, clear settings or clinical trials or uh, patient support programs uh, mm -hmm. from um, uh, social media. And uh, the, the, um, uh, the companies are required to monitor the social media there not all the sisters' social media, but their own uh, uh, social media for their companies, uh, because we know that the companies, they have their own uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and other uh, social media. So they are required to monitor all this uh, social media about the adverse events. Uh, the uh, literature uh, screening, medical and scientific literature screening mm -hmm. uh, let's let's say that uh, if um, uh, a team or of uh, um, a pi um, um, uh, physician investigator with a team with uh, trainees with uh, uh, a team they publish uh, on 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 trials or on uh, clinical trials or in, on uh, uh, some therapies uh, in their units, and they uh, they mention adverse events in their paper, mm -hmm. the, the, the adverse event of your product of our product. So we have to monitor the worldwide uh, uh, the worldwide. Uh, uh, adverse events mentioned in the literature, medical uh, literature. Uh, also, there's also the spontaneous reporting. Uh, pharmacists in pharmacy, uh, community pharmacy, they, when they are aware of uh, adverse events from their patients, they can uh, call the company or they can call also the, uh, the health authority to report adverse events. Uh, the um, also uh, we have uh, also the reporting from healthcare professionals, the reporting from uh, from the patients also, uh, as in the packaging, they are also the a uh, the uh, one uh, eight hundred number or in the other uh, other countries the uh, the uh, customer customer service uh, number, so the patient can call the company and complain about mm -hmm. adverse events. So this is adverse event 
and the serious adverse event or adverse event of special interest must be uh, submitted uh, to and reported to health to the health authority. If we are here in Canada, to Health Canada, uh, as per the, regu the regulation, um, the, uh, the the uh, the re the reporting of adverse events by the uh, by the healthcare professionals by patients uh, is in some countries in here in North America is on a voluntary basis. But as I know, in Europe, in 22 countries from the European countries, the reporting of adverse events is mandatory for healthcare professionals. So they must report any adverse events they are aware of. Uh, it's uh, very important. And um, so all this, uh, and uh, believe me that in a day, uh, the adverse event that we, um, that a professional receive must analyze must uh, uh, also uh, uh, saved in safety database, uh, uh, complete also the uh, follow-up. Sometimes we have uh, not, we, ha we, we don't have all the information because we need, and this is also one of our strength in these lectures to, uh, to, um, to um, explain how doing follow-ups with the uh, healthcare professionals and patients uh, mm -hmm. and the other companies to complete the information and to assess the seriousness the, uh, of, the, of the case, the, uh, the expectedness of the case, the causality assessment. Uh, and this is uh, the uh, main duty of the, uh, health, uh, of the uh, pharmacovigilance associate or, or, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, specialist to assess the causality between the adverse event and the uh, the um, the product uh, or the drug or the vaccine or the uh, medical device to uh, submit it. Once we have all the information uh, gathered uh, within a period, we uh, have all the pharmacovigilance specialists or the pharmacovigilance professionals have to assess the overall safety profile within a period in uh, an update safety report, periodic update safety report. The period uh, of this report here in Canada is for one year. Uh, in the US uh, for the three first years are quarterly. So four reports for a product. And you can imagine for some companies with 200 report, uh, uh, products. So yeah, there's reporting, there's reports to be uh, to be wrought, to be uh, to be uh, submitted to the health authorities, and then the the um, let's say the exciting side is when we gather all the information, we analyze this information, we detect some signals, new signals, mm -hmm. new um, adverse events, serious adverse events. We must take action because we don't have to. Uh, we are not here to collect just to collect the data, but to collect the safety data to understand. Uh, if you remember the definition of pharmacovigilance, so it's to uh, collect, to detect, to understand, and then to assess and pr prevent. Then, when we uh, we understand this risk or those risks, we have to take action and to prevent those risks. Those risks, sorry, with. Uh, risk minimization measures mm -hmm. and to develop, which we call also, it's very important, the risk management system and risk management plan. Uh, so the also to communicate with healthcare professionals to say, for example, we, uh, we uh, with the data that get, get rid, we know now, now that uh, the, uh, there's a risk for pregnant pregnant with this uh, this uh, the product so the action is to be sure to uh, do not uh, prescribe this uh, this uh, this product for pregnancy or if you uh, should prescribe this make sure on um, uh, that the the, um, uh, the 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 patient don't be pregnant within a period 
so all this, uh, this, um, this is an example, but uh, we have a lot of, a lot of examples and mm -hmm. it's very, very important. And it's a lot of passion, a lot of um, um, uh, medical knowledge, medical, the knowledge of the products, of their safety profile, effectiveness, mm -hmm. uh, and adverse events and so on, so on. Thank you, that helps really paint a, a no picture worries. of it. Um, looks like we have a question. Um, oh, someone's just asking if there's a way to contact you uh, for further questions that may come up later on. Yes, you can uh, send me later questions with a pleasure uh, on my LinkedIn. Uh, you can send me an invitation. I will surely accept it. Uh, and I, uh, I will give me just uh, 24 hours to, uh, to, uh, to reply. Sometimes, sometimes I reply on the spot, uh, and sometimes uh, I take some time to, uh, to, uh, uh, time to, to reply. So, with a pleasure, you can uh, send me question, and I'm bilingual, French or English. Uh, so, uh, you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, no, but they just followed up to say uh, thank you and uh, that as an Al Algerian pharmacy student, they're, uh, you're a great inspiration to them. So thank you. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, yeah, I like, uh, as a, a former lecturer, uh, I, um, you know, uh, I, I like sharing the knowledge and um, also, um, I learned before, so uh, I, I share this, the knowledge that I learn, and I uh, am continuously, we learn every day. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you call me as professor, but I'm, I, I, I'm, I am feeling and I feel as a student every day. I, uh, uh, I um, write papers, uh, I also uh, write articles, uh, I go to uh, to um, also to uh, to share knowledge, but also from this knowledge, uh, I am I'm, I'm learning and uh, reading articles, reading papers. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, uh, a continuous uh, training. <laughs> so don't hesitate to. Uh, uh, to reach out to me on LinkedIn, to uh, reach out also uh, uh, to the InnoVigilance. You can share freely. You can follow uh, the InnoVigilance uh, International Academy uh, or InnoVigilance. Make uh, just uh, InnoVigilance on Google. You have the uh, InnoVigilance uh, um, channel, YouTube channel uh, with some learnings, free learnings also. Uh, the uh, InnoVigilance Academy uh, page, LinkedIn page, the InnoVigilance Academy Facebook page. There's events. We are uh, preparing also uh, in webinars uh, on a monthly basis, uh, webinars uh, with other uh, worldwide professionals, worldwide experts. Uh, we are looking for the next uh, 10 months uh, uh, um, organizing webinars with uh, experts from the US, from the Middle East, from Europe, from here, Canada, from, uh, uh, from Japan, so uh, from the UK, uh, with uh, exciting uh, topics, uh, audit inspections, job markets, and it's very important uh, for, for, the, uh, uh, for some, uh, some uh, uh, students now and uh, graduate, freshly graduate. So we are um, uh, we we are uh, expecting to uh, uh, to organize a webinar on the job market, uh, pharmacovigilance internationally. So uh, we are uh, as I I uh, call this this InnoVigilance International Academy. Uh, it's not just a Canadian, but Canadian U.S. Europe and uh, the other region uh, around the world as the, uh, the pharmacovigilance and the drug safety and the patient safety is a global concern.
Does anyone have uh, any additional questions? We still have a little bit of time. I think people are just looking forward to your next webinars. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the, the, the next webinar will be next Saturday, uh, this uh, Saturday, uh, 20, uh, 27th, February 27th, uh, on the, um, uh, the um, safety data collection uh, mm -hmm. methods uh, with, uh, from the pharmaceutical companies, but also the regulatory authorities. Uh, so you can, uh, you can um, just visit the, uh, the, the website www.innovigilance.com or the, our social media, as I said before and mentioned before uh, on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And you will uh, find there the, uh, the link for the event. You can register and it's the, this, these webinars are freely, are free webinars. So you can join us and I will be happy to share all the, uh, this, uh, uh, this learnings. I think we're done. I think so. Uh, yeah. so yeah, thank you so much for, for speaking with us again today. Um, and for this webinar, it was very, very uh, informative. And um, we're very happy that people seem to enjoy it too. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's very, it's always a pleasure. It's not this, the first time as we already uh, met in the networking in 2019 with the PCSN. So it's always a pleasure to, uh, uh, to be with uh, the PCSN and uh, uh, yeah, we'll make it again and again. Thank you. Thank thank you, you. So much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention and uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks and so to join the course. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Bye. Bye.